What is up? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video is essentially going to be a bit of a Mariners podcast. Um, just haven't talked Mariners in a while, so I figure I'd come on, do a little bit of a long form video uh, talking about some moves I think they can make, the budget, all that stuff here as we dive into the off season. So grab your soda, your beer, your coffee, whatever it is, your popcorn, chips. Uh, sit back, take a listen to uh, my thoughts and what the team can do here to get better. Before I get started, very happy holidays and Merry Christmas to all of you. If you are frustrated with this team, don't let it bother you, you know, especially this time of the year. Um, so many more important things in life um, and, and no better time to remember that than during the holidays. So spend it with your loved ones, family, friends, who, whoever is in your life. And, and I hope every single one of you has a truly blessed holiday season. Uh, probably my last video before Christmas. So I want to get that out there. Hit the like button um, and hit subscribe. Those are just two free easy ways to help the channel. And I'm 21 subs away from 2600. So if you're new here, uh, help out, hit that sub button and hit that like button as well. So obviously so far this off season, the Mariners have, you know, they, they've been active, but they haven't gotten better. Um, they've made three moves. I think at best you could say they're neutral to last year, the, the, the team that ended the season September um, versus what they currently have right now. I think you can make a strong case they're worse. Um, and I think at best you could say they're about the same. E either way, no matter which way you want to slice that, it, it's not going to be good enough to compete um, for a playoff spot or, or, or the World Series for sure. Um, and, and we've heard the talks about the budget. We've heard as low as $20 million. We've heard as high as 35, I think. With most, with, with most things in life, the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle there. So you're probably, I would guess, looking at 25 to 30 million for what they have left in the budget. So what can they do based on that to get better and put a more competitive team on the field for 2024? First of all, let me be clear. Please don't shoot the messenger. Like I, the Mariners have allocated $20 for groceries. I, I'm trying to go out and, and shop for what we have with that budget and put together a good meal. It might have a lot of Stouffer's microwave meals in it, um, but it's better to eat than not to eat, right? So you need something. So um, that's all I'm going to say. So some of these names, you guys are like, well, Jay, that's that guy's terrible. I, again, this is based on what they have budget wise, what they can do. Um, so let's look at how, where certain areas that they could improve. I think that the most obvious one is designated hitter. Um, if you look at the zips projection, the video I did last week, uh, they have most of the at bats being allocated to Zach Deloach, Taylor Trammell, and then Cal getting Cal Raleigh getting a handful of DH at bats essentially. So I think that's a pretty clear spot where you can upgrade easily, right? There's about six names out there and maybe a couple trade targets that are clear cut advantage over those current guys. You cannot trot out Deloach and Taylor Trammell as your opening day DHs. It was a disaster last year when they tried with Cooper Hummel and Tommy LaStella. I don't necessarily think that was their plan. I think they were going to rotate the DH position, but whatever, it didn't work. And that's what they ended up having to start. And it was bad. So there's six names right now out there in free agency that would all be clear upgrades a designated hitter. And I think you could kind of put all these guys in a blender, spit them out and take any one of them. Um, you've got Jorge Soler. This is in no particular order. Jorge Soler, Teoscar Hernandez, Mitch Garver, J.D. Martinez, Justin Turner, and Reese Hoskins. Those would be the six names um, that give you, in my opinion, that are free agents that give you a pretty clear upgrade over what you currently have. Now, you might be sitting there going, Jay, didn't you have a video a couple weeks ago saying to avoid Jorge Soler that you didn't really like him? I did. And I still stand by a lot of what I said in that video with Soler's inconsistencies. Um, he was great last year. And if the Mariners sign him, my hope is that Brant Brown, who was with Miami last year, is now the Mariners offensive coordinator, Shane Waldron of the Mariners, um, maybe found something in Jorge Soler and, and helped him, you know, refine something or tweak something. And he took off and had a great year. And hopefully that's what you get. Because if you can get that at DH, sign me up. 2019, Jorge Soler was fantastic. 2019 is also going to be five years ago when we... Uh, I was about to say tip off the season when first pitch is thrown out um, for opening day and 20, 2020 through 2022, 
his best year was a 107 WRC plus in that shortened season. Um, so there is some inconsistencies there, and and I stand by that. However, all six of those guys have inconsistencies. They all have things that make them a risk, right? N- none of these guys are going to be surefire. There's nothing you can do. The, the surefire players are, are kind of already gone unless there's a trade you can work out. Y- you're pulling from a pool, pool of guys that you look at and say, no matter what, they're all better than what we currently have. So, uh, you know, I, while I think some of those guys are better than others, no matter what, you should be getting an upgrade. So I can stand here and say, oh, Solaire's inconsistent. Well, guess what? Teoscar Hernandez is inconsistent. Um, I think he's a little better overall hitter than Solaire, but he strikes out just as much. He doesn't walk at all, and he doesn't quite have the power um, that Solaire has either. He certainly has power, but uh, Solaire is going to give you a little bit more. I've mentioned Justin Turner. I like Justin Turner. He doesn't strike out. Better contact guy, good clubhouse guy, a little more consistent with his numbers, but he's going to be 40 here soon. I mean, he could just be done. J.D. Martinez is also older, strikes out a lot. Reese Hoskins, solid hitter, uh, but he's coming off. Uh, he missed a whole year with his injury. Um, and then Mitch Garver is a, a good hitter, but he's missed time with injury. Um, and, and he's probably maybe the worst overall hitter of, of that bunch, potentially. Um, now, each has their upside too, right? We saw what Jorge Soler did last year. If you can get that in the lineup, my gosh, you've got a legitimate DH. Teoscar Hernandez had some stretches where he carried the team last year. Uh, Mitch Garver is nice because he can kind of fill two holes. He can DH and he can be your backup catcher, allows Cal to take some more days off. Um, so you improve DH, you improve backup catcher over Sebi Zavala. So Garver offers you a little bit through that as well. Hoskins ha- has some good upside as well as put up some good years. Turner and Martinez have been pretty consistently good players. Uh, so there's all upside and downside, right? I'm going to be honest, again, like I said, I I have some preferences there, but I think you can kind of put all those guys into the blender and spit them out, and you could simulate 100 seasons, and each one of those guys would have the better season at some point. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could run 100 projections, and at some point, Justin Turner's the best hitter of that group. In some simulations, Jorge Soler's the best hitter. In some years, Teoscar Hernandez is the best hitter. So... Take with it what you will, um, but any one of those guys is going to be an upgrade. Now, you might be thinking, really, Teoscar, like, is that what we're going to do? Essentially just go with the same thing as last year? Yeah, I'm kind of with you. I, I would say Teoscar is kind of number six on that list for me. Um, I'm not really thrilled if you brought him back, but it, Teoscar Hernandez being your every DH, DH is better than Taylor Trammell, right? So, like, I'm trying to look at this through, again, like I said, the Mariners, have given me the $20 for the groceries. I'm trying to feed the family here, right? Like while still making it, you know, somewhat tasty. (laughs) I don't know if that's the right terminology there. And and Teo is better than what's on the roster to be your DH. Um, I will say not to toot my own horn um, because I don't even know if it's worthy of a toot, but, um, you know, Jim Bowden projected Teo to get two years, 28 million on the market. Now take that with a massive grain of salt with Jim Bowden or Bowden. I think it's Bowden. Um, take anything he says with a huge, huge grain of salt. But um, one of the reasons that I didn't want the Mariners to give Teoscar that qualifying offer is I wasn't convinced that he wouldn't take it. And looking at Teo's market souring a little bit, and we'll see, he could easily walk away with more than that. I think there was a chance Teo would have taken that. And I don't want Teo for 20 mil. Really don't want Teo for two years, 28 mil either. But again, it's better than what's currently on on your uh, active roster. So something to think about. Now, in terms of outfield for those guys, you cannot put them in the outfield. Uh, Teo's a little bit better than, I mean, Turner's an infielder. Um, Actually, I'd be okay there to maybe spell Ty France a little bit, maybe at third base just a little bit. He hasn't been great there, but he can manage. Um, You know, Mitch Garver can catch, like I said, that's fine. But the rest of them, cannot see the field Soler or even Teo and Teo, I think is a better fielder than Soler. You cannot have him see the field. Soler is a mess in the outfield. Um, if he signed, it has to be the DH because all his hitting value goes in the tank when his, when he's out there defensively for the most part, unless he's giving you a couple bombs a game. Um, it, it, it is truly not worth it unless there is injuries to everybody, including starting pitchers that could play right field. Um, or the game is a blowout, I would not want to see Solaire in right field. I, I, again, I grain of salt, like obviously it might have to happen sometimes, 
but I do not want to see him sign to be right field. Same with Teo. I think Teo's a little more athletic, but same kind of deal there. They need to DH and hit and, and do nothing else. And if you look at, may, may, and I don't know, maybe their numbers. I know Teo, I think, did hit a little bit better when he played the field that then go to somebody else because you can't put those guys in the outfield. And you might say, Jay, defense doesn't matter. I know some people are, are in that boat. Um, when George Kirby's ERA is 3.85 instead of 3.3, you, you'll know why. So uh, those guys need to be DHs. The only ones that I would allow to see the field really would be Turner in a pinch and, and Mitch Garver to catch. So the good news is you've got a lot of names there and maybe Reese Hoskins too. Um, You've got a lot of names there. I, I think any one of them would get me excited. Um, I think all are upgrades over what you currently have. So it should be a pretty easy position to fill. There's also been some rumors of um, the Mariners being interested in Josh Naylor from the Cleveland Guardians. Uh, I'm a little surprised that Naylor is on the market necessarily. And we don't know if he is, right? Like all these rumors are things that agents could be putting out there or it's, Hey, the Mariners have shown interest in Josh Naylor. Well, I'm sure they have, have the guardians shown interest in trading Naylor would have to be your question. Um, I think you could get it for a couple mid-level prospects. I don't know if you necessarily have to deal Wu or Miller. I, I don't know on that. Um, one interesting thing you could do if you did want to pull off a trade for Naylor and that's available. And this was, um, if you guys are on Twitter, Jag, the Jag page, uh, Mariners Twitter account. One of my favorites, um, always does the breakdowns of the DePoto interviews and everything, um, and puts them in there so you can read them. A, a really good Mariners Twitter account. He had mentioned that it's possible you could kind of maybe trade less prospects and take like Ramon Laureano's contract from Cleveland. If you were to do a trade for Naylor. Now, again, I didn't plan on coming into this off season, saying, oh yeah, Ramon Laureano, that's who you want to go get. But it would be interesting. You'd get your upgrade at DH with Josh Naylor. He can play some first as well. Um, and Laureano does give you a platoon partner with Dom Canzone in the outfield. Uh, Laureano has hit lefties very well in his career. Cannon arm, had some injury issues. Again, not, not necessarily what I wanted to come into this offseason shooting for, um, but under the budget, it's a trade you can make, and then maybe you can look for other upgrades um, outside of that as well. So that would be one way where you improve your DH spot and you add some outfield depth, which brings me to my next position. I already mentioned Laureano, but outfield, right? That, that seems to be the next area where this team, um, needs an improvement. If you look at the depth chart again, Julio, great. Love it. Love you, Julio. You're set. Then you got Cade Marlowe in left field and you have Dom Canzone in right field on the depth chart with some other guys, you know, Taylor Trammell, uh, Dylan Moore, you know, being in there as well. Um, pretty clear. <laughs> the quarter outfields could use some upgrades. I I'm not against Canzone getting playing time in the slightest, but I don't know if you can, you, you cannot pencil him and Cade Marlowe as your starting outfielders uh, going into 2024. Now the outfield markets dried up a little bit, unless maybe you want to consider Teo and Solaire outfielders. I would much prefer them at DH, but you can consider them outfielders. Um, you know, someone like Robbie Grossman makes some sense. Uh, you could probably get him for three to $5 million, um, something a little bit cheaper there. He could platoon with Canzone. And as mentioned before, you know, if you do want to grab Naylor, take on that Loriano trade, um, you know, you could platoon them a a as well. So, you know, uh, Lourdes Gurriel was a name that I was really interested in. He resigned with Arizona. Um, listen, I don't think Guriel, uh, I, I said Lourdes this time, didn't I? Last video, I kept saying Yuli Guriel when I meant Lourdes. I got it right this time. But uh, listen, I don't think Guriel's a superstar or an all star, anything like that. But it kind of seemed like the player the Mariners would be interested in this offseason. Um, they made it pretty clear they wanted to cut back on the strikeouts. Um, now, maybe that was just their way of justifying the salary dumps with Gino and Kellenic but they talked about how they wanted to cut back on those strikeouts, and I'm sure they do. I don't think they're making that up, but how much of it was just to justify the trades and how much of it is legitimately them wanting to cut back on the strikeouts? Well, Gurriel was kind of a perfect fit for that, kind of the opposite of Teoscar Hernandez. Not a ton of pop, but good contact skills, doesn't strike out, decent defender, um, and could fill in easily in right field. Well, you know, re-signs with Arizona, I, you know, I think it was four years, 32 million. 
Uh, would I have done that for the Mariners? You know, sure, I probably would have. But again, with their budget, it's hard to say, you know, how much they can spend uh, on some of these players if that truly is um, the budget that they have. But they, they've got to find a way to upgrade. I mean, you have to upgrade at least one of those outfield spots. And truthfully, I think you could try to upgrade two. But um, I, I, there's no way you can roll with, you know, Cade Marlowe and Dom Canzone as your starting outfielder. So, again, did I come into this offseason going Robbie Grossman, Ramon Laureano, guys like that as being saviors? Not at all. But it's some names that are out there that would improve the team um, and, and give them at least maybe a, a marginal upgrade. And listen, you know, if you believe the Zips projection of 87.5, I think it's probably a little less than that, to, to be truthfully honest, in my opinion. But if you want to go off that, then, you know, a half win here, half win there, it, it can add up and, and, and be the difference potentially. So um, th those would be a couple names I'd look out for. Um, starting pitching is the last one I'll talk about here a little bit. And, um, you know, I, obviously there's been, listen, Mayor Star rotation is really good, right? Luis Castillo, Logan Gilbert, George Kirby is about as good as a one, two, three, as there is in baseball. Truthfully, it's the reason why, you know, when I say, Hey, I think if this team didn't do anything, they would win 84 to 85 games. And I've had a couple people laugh at me for that, but I do think we forget that this rotation is really, really good. Now the lineup outside of Julio Cal and JP is atrocious right now, and they're going to win a lot of one, nothing two one games, but they're capable of that, right? Like th this pitching staff is good enough to do that. Um, and if it stays healthy, yeah, I think it raises the floor for this team uh, big time, which is, again, why I'm frustrated so far with this with this offseason, um, because I do think you have a really good core. I've mentioned that before. Um, and you've got Brian Wu and Bryce Miller currently penciled as the four and five. Um, obviously, we'll see what they do with trades with Wu and Miller. I'll be honest. You know, we talk about them all the time in trade scenarios. I don't know how much of that is actually coming from the Mariners and how much of that is coming from, hey, the Mariners need hitting and they have a surplus of pitching. Therefore, Wu and Miller are available. Um, I don't necessarily know if they are. They may be. I, listen, I don't think any player is untouchable, but I'm not sure how active the Mariners are actually trying to trade either one of those guys. And I'm I'm okay with that. I, I really am. Um, I, I like both of them. Bryce Miller so far looks like he's working on a splitter this offseason. I mean, my gosh, um, and I know Couch GM posted that a couple weeks ago, and I've seen a few more videos of him working on that. And my gosh, if Bryce Miller can add another, uh, add a legit secondary pitch, watch the numbers improve for Bryce Miller. And I love Brian Wu's profile, just can he stay healthy over the course of the year? But I would like to see some depth added to the rotation. Um, I don't fully trust Wu and Miller yet over the course of 34 starts. Wu for health reasons. Uh, truly, we saw both them struggle down the stretch. And right now, Bryce Miller is kind of a, a one-trick pony. He's got a really good fastball, and that's about it. I, I'm not going to pull it up, but if you want to go look at his baseball savant page, um, you know, it's it, it's not pretty. Um, it's a lot of blue for Bryce Miller. So it's very important that he figures out a secondary pitch or, you know, excuse me, a second uh, legitimate pitch. So even if you do keep both of them, it would be nice to have that depth. And, and Robbie Ray is not a guarantee to come back, right? Like we're talking after the all-star break and, and who knows what's going to happen. I mean, you, you know, we don't know where the team's going to be on August 1st. We don't know where Ray's going to be. We don't know if there's going to be setbacks. So I, I can't sit here and go, oh, Robbie Ray, August, boom, penciled in. You, you cannot do that, right? Uh, we just don't know. I mentioned on Twitter, I, I wouldn't mind kind of a flyer on James Paxton. Um, I know that might sound crazy. Here's the thing with the Mariners rotation, right? It's really good. It's a really good rotation. And when you're really good, you can afford to take some flyers on guys that may not work out. If James Paxton was signed for one year, $2 million with incentives, I, I saw some projections that had him at one year, $8 million. I, I don't see James Paxton getting an $8 million contract unless the incentives are getting up to $8 million. Um, I just can't see anybody giving him that much money with how injury prone he's been. But if you give him that deal and he doesn't pitch an inning, I mean, you still have Wu, Miller, and Hancock, right? So it's not the end of the world for something like that to happen. Now, unfortunately, with the Mariners' budget, it might be. You, you really can't take those flyers, unfortunately. When we're dealing with $25 million to spend, 
well, you know, let's say three mil on James Paxton. That's, you know, that actually is, it's not, it's a quarter, about a quarter of, of what you have left for your budget. Um, not a quarter, excuse me, about a fifth of what you have for your budget. So, and that's assuming you could get them for three mil. It might be a little more than that. So you do have to look at it like that. I would love it. I would love to bring them in. Uh, Steamer projects him to be at 142 innings, 2.3 wins above replacement level. Do I think Paxton pitches 142? Probably not. I would say maybe 100 to 115 is a better bet. But then you can have Bryce Miller work on that splitter in Tacoma or, or in Double A or wherever you want to have him work on it. Then he comes up when Paxton's hurt. Wu can take a few starts off if you know he gets fatigued, um, and Paxton can fill in. Paxton can skip some starts. And, you know, Wu or Hancock can come up and make starts. So you can make that work with this rotation. Obviously, uh, I almost said Kirby, Kirby, Gilbert, and Castillo, they need to be making every start, right? That There's nothing you're doing with either one of them where they're skipping starts. But the other guys, you can kind of work it out. And then maybe you have some more fresh arms come August, September. And that might sound silly, but we saw what happened with Miller and Wu down the stretch. They were fatigued in September. Um, I don't think Marco Gonzalez is great shakes. But it would have been nice to have someone kind of there as a six starter to maybe take a little bit off those guys. And then maybe you do get Robbie Ray back um, and it can factor in as well. So, and I think of all the guys left that would be cheap for starting pitching, cheap being the keyword, I think Paxton has the most potential to be good and an actual solid contributor in the major league rotation. Um, but again, with their budget, I don't know if they can take that flyer. They need proven guys like, and it stinks because like I said, offensively, the Mariners need guys that can produce, right? I, I don't think you can take too many flyers offensively, but pitching wise, I think with your rotation, you could, um, I don't think they will, but I, I think it could be something that you could do. And if you open up the books a little bit, I don't think anybody would care. Who cares if you spent 4 million on James Paxton, and he doesn't pitch. So be it, right? Is that, what else are you going to do with that 4 mil? You know, it's not like that would be four million you could put towards Otani or Yamamoto or a Soto extension. And I'm not trying to get on them too much. I don't think Otani was ever going to come here. I, I probably wouldn't have done the Soto trade, but you know what I mean, right? Like, what else are you going to put it towards? I still want them to sign other guys, but I, I don't know where else you're going to spend that four mil, you know, necessarily on, on a one year deal. So I, it would be something I would look at doing, but I don't know if necessarily they have the budget to do it because, like I said, they're operating with anywhere from 20 to 35, I mean, that Paxton deal could be a decent chunk of that. And unfortunately, if that's the case, you know, you, you can't do that, uh, unfortunately. Blake Snell has been mentioned a few times as well. Um, I don't see that happening. I know Blake Snell would like to come to Seattle. I mean, he's been pretty clear on that. Um, now, I'm, I'm actually not the... I like Blake Snell. I shouldn't say that. I, I, I think he's maybe a little overrated. I don't think his site... Young season was quite as dominant as others. I get a little bit of Robbie Ray vibes from Blake Snell, right? I think he's a really good pitcher. I don't think he's necessarily an ace. But again, in this rotation, he wouldn't have to be. So I'd still be all for it. It'd be a great addition. Could you imagine if this rotation was Castillo? I keep wanting to say Gil, uh, uh, Gerby. I'm, I'm combining Kirby and Gilbert. We'll call him Gerby. So with Castillo and Gerby, um, you know, yeah, add Blake Snell. It'd be great. You'd have the best you know, one, two, three, four punch in all baseball. And you could get away with the offense not being quite as good because you are going to win a lot of one, nothing, two, one games. Um, but here's the thing. I, one, if you sign Blake Snell, I mean, I, I can't imagine you're going to have room for any other moves. Now you could make some trades um, and, and you could do something like that. But for the most part, um, you know, there, there goes your budget. And they've already given big money to... Um, Luis Castillo and Robbie Ray. So I do not see them uh, giving big money to a third starting pitcher in this rotation. Bullpen arms. I've never been big on spending in the bullpen. It's never something to me um, as I'm just pulling something up here uh, on my computer that I would spend a ton of money on in the bullpen. I think the mayor's done a good job. The bullpen is where I agree with kind of being cheap uh, buy low, you know, sell high on bullpen arms. So nothing I would really do. Um, in there, I do want to go back a little bit to the, uh, you know, I, I kind of glossed over Josh Naylor a little bit. Um, again, Morosi tweeted yesterday, John Morosi, that the mayors have shown interest in Josh Naylor. 
Now, Morosi has been a little all over the place this offseason. Um, so again, just like I said with Bowden with the Teoscar contract, take anything Morosi says with a huge grain of salt. Uh, but he did mention the Mariners have some interest in Josh Naylor. Josh Naylor is projected to have a 125 WRC plus. Um, actually, let's look at Steamer here. And he's a 124 WRC plus, 284 average, 344 OBP, 481 slugging, 349 weighted on base average. Uh, not much of a defender, but a good offensive player. And if he's DHing, you're going to get all that offensive value from him uh, without having to worry about um, any of the defense. And, and I guess he could play first base in a pinch if, if you needed him to. So Josh Naylor would be a great addition. Um, again, I'm not positive the Guardians are actually shopping him, and he's got his brother coming up in the organization. Um, I don't know if that necessarily impacts how a team will handle it, but you know we'll see. And Naylor's also a, a high energy guy. Uh, a lot of uh, um, plays the game hard. You know, a, a good clubhouse guy to have in here, which kind of feels like is needed a little bit too. Um, after losing Gino, it would be nice to kind of have a little leadership coming in here, and, and I think Josh Naylor uh, would certainly add that. So. Listen, I, I think to recap this, um, DH is a clearly obvious one. You've got the six names I mentioned. Trade for Josh Naylor, something like that. Um, all for it. The outfield, I, I feel like it's something, unless you want to stick Teo back in there, you're going to have to make a trade. You know, maybe Brian Reynolds is more available now after a bit of a down year. Um, but then again, you got to take that contract on. So, you know, I, I don't really know exactly all of what this team can can do there in, in the outfield. One, another couple interesting names that were out there. Um, it's been floated around that the Minnesota Twins may be willing to trade Jorge Polanco and Max Kepler um, in a deal. That would be a nice addition because you could put Polanco at third or second and get an automatic upgrade on the infield, and Kepler can fill in for you for right field. That is something I would keep an eye on. Um, out of all the trades, that kind of seems to me to be the most likely. Uh, we saw the Mariners do kind of something similar two years ago with Jesse Winker and a Eugenio Suarez. So that is a move I would keep an eye on for Kepler and Polanco. I'm going to pull up their stuff on fan graphs just real quick here. Um, and we'll take a look at that together. So let me pull that up. So for Max, first we've got Max Kepler here, and I do not have the screen share on, unfortunately, because I'm on a different app, so I can't pull it up. But Kepler for the steamer projection, uh, projects in 2024, 250 average, 333 OBP, 446 slugging, 337 weighted on base average, 116 WRC plus, and 2.3 wins above replacement level. That's about a full win over what you're currently getting in the outfield. So that would be um, a big time nice addition uh, if you could add Max Kepler, and let's look at Polanco. We got Jorge Polanco here. Uh, has been injured, has missed some time. One of his last full seasons, he did um, produce uh, with 644 at bats in 2021, 4.2 wins above replacement level. Uh, but so far for 20, well, so far, 2024 Steamer projects him at 250 average, 332 OBP, 423 slugging, 328 weight on base average, 110 WRC plus, and 2.5 wins above replacement level again you put him at third or second move rojas or urias around and you kind of improve two positions there it allows urias to platoon with rojas and then polanco can play every day you know a, another move that i think would be a real nice upgrade so keep an eye on that that would actually be a pretty exciting move they could do that they could trade for kepler and polanco and then go sign mitch garver something like that you know we'll, we'll see what they end up doing but those are kind of the moves i think that are out there I think all those moves would make you better. I, I know this offseason has not gone how we hoped. Again, I will reiterate, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just going off of what they have with the budget and where I think they can make moves. Final one I've talked about, I meant to add this earlier, Randy Rosarina um, was talked about as an outfield trade candidate as well. I think that ship has sailed. Um, the Rays aren't tanking. They are they have bad ownership. They're trying to shed payroll. Where have we heard that before? And they kind of did with Glass now and Margot and the Dodgers deal. So now I, I'm not so sure they would trade a Rose Arena uh, for any reason. It could still happen. There were some rumors of Paredes, Isaac Paredes, and a Rose Arena. Um, that would kind of be like a beefier version of Kepler and Polanco. But I think right now Kepler Polanco is way more realistic than a Rose Arena and Paredes for sure. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'll be here with any moves as soon as they happen as best I can over the holidays. 
Have a great holiday season, everybody. Remember to hit that like button. If you're new here, please hit subscribe. Like I said, have a great holiday. And like I said, if you are frustrated with this team, big bigger things to worry about in life, right? More important things. Enjoy your holiday. Don't let this team beat you up. I, I, I'll take the bullets for you guys. <laughs> I'll stand here and take the fire. I'm going to keep coming on here. I'm not running away from the team. It's been frustrating so far. But there are still some ways this team can get better and, and still be competitive in 2024. So let's see if they have anything uh, up their sleeve as the offseason continues. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Enjoy the holidays. And I'll see you all next time. Go Mariners. Peace.